All right, finding zeros of polynomial functions. The first thing we're gonna talk about is the remainder theorem. So if this polynomial f of x is divided by x minus k, and I know this can be confusing with a bunch of letters floating around, but um, visualize this as k is just some number. So we're dividing by say x minus two, then if all we care about is the remainder, what we could simply do is plug in two into the function and evaluate the function at an x value of two. So um, being that in my example, I said we were dividing by x minus two, you kind of visualize this as what would I plug in for x here to make this equal zero. So if this was x plus three, you'd plug in a negative three for your x, that's what gets plugged into the function itself. Now here's why it works, the division algorithm. So whenever we have the di di dividend, so like f of x, and it's divided by our divisor, um, we can rewrite our dividend as the divisor multiplied by the quotient plus the remainder. Okay, so D for divisor, Q for quotient, R for remainder as our functions are called here. So we just said we were dividing by our divisor, X minus K. So X minus K, we've kind of slotted in for what we're dividing by the divisor. Now, if we want to evaluate this at K, we plug in a K into the function, it replaces this X and this X, and technically it'd be R of X here at the end as well. Um, but when we plug it in here, we get K minus K. So that makes a zero. And then zero times anything is gonna be zero. So all of this disappears and we have zero plus R, we're just gonna be left with the remainder, whatever R is. Let's put this into practice with a couple of problems and I'll show you an alternative way to go about this as well. So if we wanna uh, use the remainder theorem to evaluate this function F of X at X equals two, that means we're dividing by X minus two. So one way we have to do this is we can use the remainder theorem and plug in two. So we can evaluate this at two. So we have six times two to the fourth power minus two to the third power minus 15 times two squared plus two times two minus seven. And then we can either work this by hand one little step at a time or we can get the calculator out and get that to help us out. This eventually makes 25. So what that tells us is if we divide by X minus two, the remainder would be 25. Okay, so that's one way to go about this. I tend to not use the remainder theorem as much on these because we want more information than just the remainder typically. So another alternative way to do this is if we're dividing by X minus two, we can, we can do synthetic division by putting a positive two out in front and then I'm gonna list out the coefficients from f of x. So uh, six, negative one, negative 15, two, and negative seven. That's gonna go up above here. So six, negative one, negative 15, positive two, and negative seven go up above. And then we're gonna run through synthetic division pretty quickly. And this will give us extra information that the remainder theorem by itself will not. All right, so synthetic division, the six comes down. And then our process goes, we multiply. So two times six makes 12. And then we add vertically. So negative one plus 12 makes 11. Back to multiplying, two times 11 makes 22. Adding negative 15 plus 22 makes seven. Multiply, two times seven makes 14. Um, add two plus 14 makes 16. One more multiply, two times 16 makes 32. And finally, we add negative seven plus 32 makes 25. If you'll recall from synthetic division, the remainder in synthetic division is given by this last digit, the 25. But this also gives us extra information that we're gonna want later on. The rest of these digits over here, these represent the quotient. Okay, so listing out the quotient that that last digit's gonna be a constant. Then we go X, X to the second, X to the third as we kind of build this up. So we could write out our quotient as six X to the third plus 11 X squared plus seven X plus 16 with a remainder of 25. Okay, so synthetic division does give us a little bit of extra information. And honestly, it's not that difficult as we're just adding and multiplying the whole way through, which usually goes pretty quickly. All right, let's go through one more of these. This time, let's use the remainder theorem on f of x, which is 2x to the fifth minus 3x to the fourth minus 9x cubed 
plus 8x squared plus 2. So quite a bit going on here. Um, let's just plug in negative 3 if all we care about is the remainder. So we evaluate this at negative 3. So plugging that in, we have 2 times negative 3 to the fifth power minus 3 times negative 3 to the fourth power minus 9 times negative 3 to the third power plus 8 times negative 3 squared plus 2. Probably get the calculator out um, as we've got some pretty big numbers going on here and evaluate this. We figure out this is equal to negative 412. Okay, so the remainder, if you divide f of x by x plus 3, is going to be uh, negative 412. All right, hope this helps out with the remainder theorem. I am going to go away from the remainder theorem and use synthetic division quite a bit more just because of the extra information it gives us, but it also gives us the remainder. Honestly, synthetic division, I think, is a little bit more useful for our practices. All right, good luck with it.